All right. So this problem, when we finish it, it kind of blows my mind with what their answers for A's and B's are. And I wish I was at home right now because I would take a video of my kids in the backyard and I'll show this off. Okay. I'll explain it here in a minute. But a tightroper, a tightrope walker located at a certain point to flex the rope as indicated in the figure. So when they're here, this angle's down 3% or 3 degrees, that one's 4 degrees. The person weighs 150 pounds. How much tension is in each part of the rope? So first thing we're looking at is, as we look at this problem, what forces are acting on the rope? How many forces? Three. There's a force that is pulling it from here up and to the right. We'll call that force A. We have a force that is pulling this rope up and to the left. We'll call that force B. What else do I got? Gravity. Something pulling us straight down. It's force C. Everybody with me to that point? Again, once you get better at this, this next part is going to go a lot faster. But let's talk about force A. How much, what is the magnitude of force A? How much pull does it have? We don't know. That's the whole point of the problem is to figure out how much tension there is. So force A, we don't know. Then we're going to do cosine of an angle comma sine of an angle. At what angle is it being pulled? Three degrees. So three degrees, sine of three degrees, cool. Everybody get to that point. Then we're going to do force B. I don't know the tension. I am pulling in two different directions. I'm pulling left and up. So it's cosine of some angle and sine of some angle. What angle can I use here? You can use 176. That is lovely because understand why. Okay, think about the unit circle. Here is three degree, or four degrees right here. 176 degrees is right there. It just puts them together. You can use that. I'm going to try to make the problem as easy as possible. And I'm going to use, what other angle could I use besides 176? Never mind. That confused you. So I'm just going to use 176. Perfect. We're doing 176. The reason I want 176 is because it's pulling it to the left. I need it to be negative because it's going to the left. Everybody good so far? I got one more force, force C. Force C, how much pull does force C have? 150, and we know it's just going to be 150 because it's going straight down. Cosine of some angle, sine of some angle. What angle? 270 because it's being pulled straight down. All right, so there's my setup. I don't like it in that form. I'm going to go ahead and distribute in here so we get our actual angle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So A, cosine of 3, comma, A, sine of 3. That's force 1. Force 2, force B is going to be B, cosine of 176, comma, B, sine of 176. Last one. C, one fifty times cosine of two seventy. What is cosine of two seventy going to get us? Zero, because cosine is the x value at two seventy. You're going straight down, so that's zero. And I'm going to take one fifty times sine of two seventy. What's sine of two seventy going to get me? Negative one. So it's sine. I'm sorry. It's just negative one fifty. Questions to hear. How much is the tight rope walker moving? Uh, Matthew, yes, sir. Uh, do we have to do like the first step? If you can jump right into that second step, feel free to jump right into that second step. How much is that tight rope walker moving when, when we're doing this problem? None. He is in static equilibrium. He is standing still on that tight rope. Okay, so there no force is working on him. Okay, they're all, or they're actually there's three forces working on him, but they are all balanced. So what that means is his forces that are taking him left and right, all three of those things, when we put them together, what is it going to get me? Zero. So A, cosine of three, plus B, sine of 176, plus, I'm sorry, cosine 176, plus zero. When I add those all together, it's going to get me zero because he's not moving left and right. He is standing still. There's, none of those forces are making a move left and right. 
How much is he moving up and down? Zero. So if I take all the up and down forces, that's those three things. So A, sine of three, plus B, sine of 176, minus 150, that's all going to be equal to zero. All of those things are going to get me zero because he's not moving up and down either. Anybody with me to that point? Super. We have two equations with two variables. Two equations, two variables. Since algebra one, we solve that using substitution. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to pick one of these equations. This one's a little bit easier. What letter would you like to get by itself? A. So if I get A by itself, I've got A cosine of three. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move that over. So it's going to be equal to negative cosine of 176 B. I just put that in front. That way it's easier to realize the negative sign there. Everybody go with what I did. I just took this thing right here. I moved it to the other side so it became negative. I want to get A by itself. So what else do I need to do to get A by itself? Divide by cosine of 3 on both sides. Divide by cosine of 3. So what does that mean? A equals negative cosine of 176 divided by cosine of 3. B. That's what we found out so far. Okay, I'm going to leave it. We found out yesterday that if we left the numbers in it, it was a little bit easier than dealing with the crazy decimals. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it right there for now. That's what A is equal to. I still have a variable left over, though. What can I do? Now that I know what A is equal to, what should I do with that thing? Substitute it. I'm going to take this whole thing, and I'm going to substitute it in for A in the other problem, because A equals that. Okay, so my new problem is going to look like this. Negative cosine. 176 over cosine of 3 times sine of 3, because that's what's left over. This, this, that, and then the letter B plus B sine of 176. That's just this guy. What's that all going to be equal to? 150. I'm going to move that 150 to the other side, so it's going to become positive. Good to hear. At this point, I've got this right here. As scary as this looks, that is just a number. That's some amount of B. And as crazy as this looks, that is just a number. Sine of 176 is just a number times B. So what can I do with these two numbers if they're both just a constant with B? Combine them. So in my calculator, I'm going to take negative cosine. Make sure you're in degrees or otherwise this won't work negative cosine 176 close my parentheses divided by cosine of three close my parentheses so i took these two oh yeah i gotta multiply by sine of three times sine of three that's my first number and i'm going to add to that this plus sine of 176 i get that right there that is how much b i have Okay, 0.122B. I'm not really rounding it. I'm just writing it down so we can see it. 0.122B now is going to be equal to 150. I want to get B by itself. So what else do I need to do? Divide. It's divided by that 0.122 number. Divide that by that 0.122 number. So in my calculator, it's 150 divided by that number right there. I hit enter. That is B, 1229.140. B equals 1229.140. That's the pounds of force that it is currently holding on B. So this thing right here is pulling 1,200 pounds. It's a lot of force. What would I do to find the other one? Plug it in. I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it back in for B. So it's this number right here times negative cosine of 176 divided by cosine of 3. I'm just taking it and plugging it back in. I hit enter 1227.828. It should make sense that they're pretty close together because the angles that we were using were pretty similar. 3 degrees and 4 degrees, not a whole bunch of difference.
Anybody go with that? That's a lot of weight. The guy only weighs 150 pounds, and we're pulling over almost 2,500, over 2,500 pounds. It's a lot of weight. Okay, or close to that. Now, that's weird, but my kids in my backyard, they have a slack rope. You know what I'm talking about? So that it's more like a, a truck strap that is across the top. They play Ninja Warrior on it or whatever. They climb and they hang on it. My kids weigh like 40 pounds. And to do that, you have to tighten it so much that it pulls the trees. Okay? Because you're not just pulling, holding the weight of the kids down below, but you're holding them horizontally. And so it should be a really big force because it's got to be so tight that they can stand on it. Okay? Think of any rope tied between two things and try to hang on it. It's not going to work. Okay, you need a lot of force. Questions there? Cool, you guys seem excited about it. 